PlayStation 5, let me show you what's going on. First things first, we have a ripped off fan connector. The connector is lost. And then the second phase of lots of fun. Everything came disassembled. Everything. So once we get the fan connector sorted, we have this fun to do with. This video is brought to you by PCBWay. We'll talk more about them in a little bit. With the board already out of the housing, and as I unexpectedly have access to the heatsink, I'm just gonna leave it on to keep the liquid metal from getting all over the place. I'll address the liquid metal after we've done the fan connector. In order to begin the work, I must turn on my equipment. And while I turn on my equipment, let me throw out my expected temperatures for this job. These temperatures are brought to you by the associate links in the description. If you go to my video description and click on one of these links and buy any of this equipment, a small portion of that purchase will go to supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate you. It won't cost you an extra dime. Grab our handy dandy grinding pin. Do some grinding, even though it looks like maybe somebody Decided to start before me. We can only go so far on this pad. Go ahead and get the loose stuff off. I'm glad they did not continue and actually uncover that. For your orientation purposes, the board view is on the screen. So you can keep up with where we are. The targeted zone is where we're working. Add some flux. You can find the flux in the description under consumable tin our area so we can make our pads. Pad is ground, so it's proving a little bit more of a challenge. Should be enough. Grab our tape and start seeing if we can measure out some pads here. Roughly that width looks like it'll be all right. That looks like it'll be fine. Cut it in two roughly equal sections for our grounds. Pre tin. I'll just use some of this flux we got on here. Flip our pad around. Solder him in place. We'll deal with the adhesive after. The alcohol and the cleaning will take care of it. Man, that is super solid. Grab some solder, pre tin. Flip them over. Now we want to be real careful here because it is very close to another signal. We don't want to make inadvertent contact there. Change our lighting so you know we can all see. All right. Solder them in place. So again, we'll be very solid. Eye some pads out here. We want this pad and this pad. Pretty narrow, but not too narrow. I think that's just about right. Flip them over and pretend. We'll pretend the whole thing because it'll lend some strength to the pad. Basically adding another layer to it. Place without touching the other one. Yeah, I think this may be a little too thick. Not too thick, too wide. Let's trim it. Okay, that's better. Want to run it a little bit long so we can secure it down with UV solder mask but don't need it that long. See if we can eye the next one a little bit better. I'll make sure it's not gonna make contact. It will not, very good. That one will do just fine. Just tin them up. For those new to this, I do not use the copper tape for the adhesive qualities. In fact, we'll be removing all the adhesive in the cleanup process. We're using it because it's just thin Copper and makes for a nice flat pad. On this one, we can solder on both sides because it's ground. Very good. Now, typically, we're not left with a partial pad on this one, we're only left with the via, but we do have a partial pad, so we might just go ahead and lay down another copper track here. Rather than run a jumper, 
like we normally do. We have some area that can hold the pad, which we typically don't have. Make him a little bit more narrow. I think that'll work. We will need to clean thoroughly. We will employ our ultrasonic toothbrush. It will get under the pads better than a regular toothbrush. You can see the alcohol is removing the adhesive. I have to do a little bit of scrubbing to get it all off. But not a big deal. It will break up eventually. Now we need to address some of these are lifting up a little bit. So what we're going to do here is apply a little bit of mask. Enough to hold them down. Or at least that one. It looks like that's really the only concern. Grab our glasses, which have UV protection, and hold this down a little bit. And we're just going to tack it down with the laser. We're not trying to get like a full cure on this. We're just trying to get enough where that pad won't move. Time to make a miss. We want to cover the solder joints thoroughly. When we go to solder the connector on, they will float. Heat will transfer up them pretty quickly. We just don't want them moving around while we're trying to solder or getting sucked into the connector. Surface tension can work for you or against you, depending on the situation. This will not be pretty, but it will be solid. I always say in every one of these videos, if you want it pretty, you shouldn't rip the connector off the board. Don't worry about making a mess on the pad. It scrapes off pretty easily. Let's tack it down again before we start the full cure. Okay, I'm gonna stick my UV lamp on there. I'm gonna step away and probably cook some dinner. Let that just get a really thorough cure and we'll come back and work on it after. I hope you're getting value out of this video. Just a reminder, if you find you're not ready to tackle this, I do offer these services, both locally and mail-in. Just head over to micromage.repair, click free quote, fill out the form, and I'll get back to you personally. If you mention this video, I'll give you 10% off on your repair. Okay, we stepped away for a while and we are 100% well cured. Rock solid. Excellent. I'm gonna do some prep here and scrape away a little bit of this. Might get in the way of our soldering. On the pad. Changing our board orientation, but we're still working in the same area. Just want to be able to solder it. We'll be using a new connector, which I sourced a while back. Tin our pads. May need to scrape that one a little bit. See how we align here? I just want to make sure I have pad to solder to. Yeah, I need to scrape that a little more. Get this one anchor down first, that way you can flatten it and then we'll worry about the other anchor. I hope anyway. See the idea. My theory about getting this other anchor after will be tested. Okay, so that in theory was an idea, but I think we're gonna pull it and tin that anchor. Gonna work better with solder on it. If I had had enough space, it might have worked, but I don't really don't have enough space to solder it like that. Flatten it as much as we can. This guy soldered. Solid, solid, solid. And that connector, not going anywhere. Excellent. Clean up. Final inspection. Rock solid. Those pins are very solid. The anchors are very solid. It's sitting a little higher than it was before, but that's not going to hurt anything. I would say this is probably stronger than it was from the factory. Excellent. Now I get the pleasure of trying to sort out the rest of this mess. And something you always got to check with these PS5s is... The liquid metal and as you can see we have a huge dry spot on this one apologies i did not adjust the board view for working on the cpu
way better than it was. PCB Way offers many great services, like PCB, with many options like Standard, Advanced, FPC and Rigid, and much more, or CNC and 3D printing, PCB Assembly, and they even have their own store with a whole lot of great deals. Click on my link in the description and check out PCB Way today. I got this thing all the way back together and went to power it on, and no power. And I found a cause. We're getting absolutely zero from our power supply, so I'm going to have to contact the client and let him know he has additional problems. Yay me. Before we get crazy and go order a supply, I just want to make sure there's some signs of life from the board. And according to our guy Toltec Mert, the minute we turn on our power supply, we should be going up to about 300 and back down. That would be normal behavior. Let's see what happens. PSU channel 2. All right, 300 milliamps and off. Very good. That should be normal. It is several days later and our new power supply has come in. I just want to double check and make sure it's actually outputting voltage. And that is a drastic improvement from the other one. So the job now is to reassemble and give the unit a test and make sure everything is working, including our fan spin. So I powered this thing up and it does power up. Unfortunately, the fan is not spinning. So I have removed the connector to take a look at our trace work and everything is fine which leads me to believe the fan is also bad it's just one thing after another with this console we'll put another connector on because i unfortunately melted this one getting it off go from there let's put a fresh connector on i just want to be quadruple certain that we're actually getting a connection here so i'm going to scrape all this off Everything is solid as it should be. I do believe we have a fan problem. So I will re-secure that side of that one down, though I don't think it's going to go anywhere anyway. We'll put a new connector on, go from there. I'll have to contact the client and tell them we need a new fan. I am definitely getting tired of this PS5. Solid. And as you can see, it is powering up, but no fan spin. So. Yep, another problem to add to the list of problems. Okay, new fan arrived and we still have no fan spin. So there has to be a problem with something we've done here. We need to remove this connector again. Probably will burn it. I'm not worried about destroying the connector because I have lots of them. Just want to get this off without destroying anything else. I feel like our problem lies here with the gray signal line because we're getting power elsewhere. So let's take a look. See what's going on here. Should be getting continuity from that via to a pad. What's led to that pad. And we are. So that should have soldered down. We may have to run a jumper from the via. A little bit of solder on the via part. Water should have connected that, even if there was a disconnect. I feel like it's not being told to turn on. Whether that's our problem or the board's problem, I do not know. I don't like these mysteries. Solid. Grab another connector. We'll go one wrap for now. Leave the extra wire on there. Okay, one wrap and get it off if we need to. Is this solid enough to test? I think so. We'll touch everything up if it works. Okay, and as you can see, we have fan spin. The unit is powering back on, it's working. We did apparently have a connection problem on the gray signal line. So future reference, we will not run a copper pad there. We will run a jumper. Good to make a note of that.
clothes and we're golden excellent we'll just clean up put it back together and go from there okay this one did anything but go smoothly but we learned a few things and even in the case where you bought parts where it turns out you didn't need them i now have a known working good fan that i can test against if there is a similar problem in the future so not a big deal if you got value out of this video i think you'll get value out of this one and i'll see you there until then peace love and saw the wake <laughs>